As always, it's a good idea to draw a basic picture of what's going on. We got a person uh, standing on a scale, and that person is in an elevator. Um, when it's a force type problem, you should always draw a free body diagram. So let's do that. If you think about the forces that the person is feeling, of course, the Earth always pulls downward on us. That's the force of gravity or the weight. And then anything that touches the person is going to exert a force on the person. The only thing touching the person is the scale. So the scale is going to push up. You can call that F scale. Uh, an upward force that a surface exerts is also called a normal force. And uh, so you could call it that as well. So that would be the free body diagram. Whenever you draw a free body diagram, the reason to do that is so that you can use this equation. Acceleration equals the sum of the forces divided by the mass. And the question here is to find the acceleration of the elevator. And so that's how we're going to do it, using this equation right here. So let's put in what we can. This symbol, the sum of the forces, means you are literally adding up the forces that are in your picture here. And uh, I should mention that anything that points up, we usually say is positive. Anything that points down is negative. Um, so at some point, we need to think about what are the numbers for these forces. And that's where the numbers that we see in the statement of the problem are going to help us out. It says that the scale reads 555 newtons when the elevator is moving at a constant velocity, and when the elevator is accelerating, it reads 666 newtons. And we want to calculate the acceleration of the elevator. So in the situation that we're interested in, uh, which is the accelerating situation, the scale reads 666 newtons. So that means that this force is 666 newtons. Now to solve this problem, we're going to need to know what the force of gravity is. We do have an equation that says force of gravity equals m times g. m is mass. It's measured in kilograms. We don't have the mass. Um, and we can't find the mass with this 666 because that's the normal force. That's not the force of gravity. So sometimes when I'm stuck on a problem, I look back and see, is there any information that I was given that I haven't used? And yes, there is. It's this 555 newtons right here. And so why is that helpful to us? Well, um, it says that that's what the scale reads when the elevator is moving at a constant velocity. So maybe just for a moment, I'm going to make a separate diagram here for the constant velocity situation. Uh, still there's a downward force of gravity. Still there's an upward force that the scale exerts, which they're telling us is equal to 555 newtons. And So how does this help us? Well, here's where you have to remember something we've learned about Newton's laws, that if something's moving at a constant velocity, the forces on it are balanced. So the forces are not balanced when there's acceleration. These two are not equal to each other because there's acceleration in this situation. But in the situation where there is a constant velocity, they are balanced. They are equal to each other. And so that means that the force of gravity is equal to 555. And of course, the force of gravity stays constant. Uh, the Earth doesn't pull any harder or weaker on you just because you're accelerating. So that means that even here, the force of gravity is 555 newtons. So now I can apply this equation. I can add up the forces in the picture. There's a positive 666. There's a negative 555. And then to get the answer, I have to divide by mass. Again, we weren't given mass. But here's where, very frequently in these problems, you're going to use this equation, Fg equals mg. We know that the Fg is 555. And g, which is the Earth's gravitational field strength, is 9.8. The Earth pulls with a force of 9.8 newtons on every kilogram of mass. And so that gives us a, a value of m. I'm just going to have to use my calculator here and take 555, whoops, 555 and divide by 9.8 and that gives me 56.6. So the mass is 56.6 kilograms. That's the other number I needed here. I can use my calculator again to answer this question. So um, 
666 minus 555. And I get a final answer of 1.96 meters per second squared. And it's a positive answer, by the way. So that's the answer to the question, what is the acceleration of the elevator? Now the other question here is, if possible, state which way the elevator is moving and whether it's speeding up or slowing down. Well, what we know is that the acceleration is positive. And remember, acceleration always points in the same direction as the net force. So we know that the net force is positive. And really, that's all we know. So we have to ask ourselves, is it, does that tell us for sure whether it's moving up or moving down? Well, the answer is no. Because you can be moving up in an elevator and have more upward force than downward force. You can also be moving down in an elevator and have more upward force than downward force. So both of those situations are possible. Um, does it tell us whether it's speeding up or slowing down? Again, no, it doesn't. We can't tell that because all we know is that the uh, net force is upward. And just as a reminder, um, if an elevator is, let's say, moving upward, and it has an upward net force on it. Imagine pushing upward on something that's moving upward. That's going to make it speed up. So one possibility, one possibility is that the elevator is moving up and speeding up. That would require an upward force to make that happen. But another possibility is that the elevator is moving down. If something's moving down and you push up on it, so uh, say this pen is moving down and I push up on it, what does that do? It makes it slow down. So both of these situations, this situation and these, this situation, both of these situations would result in an upward net force. Both of these situations would result in the upward force being larger than the downward force. And if all we know is that the upward force is larger than the downward force, it's not enough to say which of those two situations we are in. So you would need more information to answer that question.